In the pursuit of a perfectly smooth firewall, I'm gonna show you guys how to do this right now on House of Doula. What is up YouTube? Hey, let's look, gonna make a quick video here on how I plan to relocate the wiper motor here on our 79 Eagle Brews project here. This is our 2000, I'm sorry, this is our 1979 a uh, little Mustang Coupe EcoBoost project that is receiving the 2015 EcoBoost motor. Right now, the only thing I'm focusing on is smoothing the engine bay and prepping it and getting it ready. One of the things I want to do is move the wiper. So obviously the wiper motor has been removed and we are going to try to relocate it here and extend the arm so that it gets hidden behind the fender and allows me to smooth this and get rid of the kind of ugly eyesore that is the big um, wiper motor. So, that being said, let me show you what I've already kind of done. This is trial and error. We're gonna do this together. I've never done this before. I've seen it done. I'm getting my ideas 100% 100 off a uh, member from the North Texas Fox Body Club, Doug Yergen. Um, he is operator of Foxworks. Check him out on Instagram. He does awesome work and I'm doing this similar. So without giving me tons of details on how it's done, we're just gonna kind of figure it out. So the idea is to mount the motor here and make a bracket for it and then extend a rod so that it goes through the opening here. So that being said, let me show you what I've already done. So really not much. Uh, what I did do is go ahead and open up the hole here because otherwise you have a small drain lip right there. That's just for the water to get out of the cowl and into the drains out of the car. So I went ahead and removed that because we're gonna need the room uh, for the wiper arm articulation. And obviously the wiper arm has been removed, of course it has the motor, which is right here. And I've got zip ties on it for a reason because I'm trying things out right now. So we've also got, this motor is obviously in really bad shape. It looks nasty, but it works still and is original to the car so we can clean it up in the blaster. But ideally what, you, what we wanna do, if you put it right here in a certain spot, um, it'll rotate and let me show you what I'm talking about here. I went ahead and hooked up the car's power source and the negative. These are the chassis grounds and this is also a ground going to the chassis. So it's just got a little bit of power, um, just enough to key it on and test this so we can run the motor. So let me show you what I've kind of got going on here. So this is kind of the idea. What we're gonna try to do is mount this in a location right here and I'll plug it in and I'll show you here. Let me plug it in real quick. So we're probably gonna to have to notch this section out here because the rod's gonna to have to travel through this direction. But that is the idea. So, we Okay, for the rod here, I've got just some uh, you know, leftover steel rod, whatever. I've got quite a bit of this stuff left over. And I've got a nut. Again, this is kind of temporary. I'm not worried about making it pretty. But this nut will fit. It's been rounded off. It doesn't have any threads on it anymore. So it'll fit over and slide like so. So we're gonna weld this on, and the point of this is just to test the articulation and make sure that this is even gonna work, make sure it's possible at all. So that's what we're doing. All right, just tack that on like so. All right, so hey, they're running. Here, yeah? we got squeaking. We got movement back there. We got the fender on, I checked for clearance. I'll show you what I got up in here. Okay, so there it is, it is actually zip tied. We are functioning and it is just so close to hitting the fender. So it's working, I just need to bring it in a little bit more. And um, of course it's binding. Let me go ahead and turn it off. Because this rod keeps slipping. Let me take the fender off and show you. All right. <laughs> All right, man, so this is what we got here. So I did have to enlarge in this hole a little bit more. Yeah, I've been finagling. I'm gonna clean it up. I'm gonna make it look a little bit prettier, but I also have the rod slightly bent a little bit. And it's starting to bind just because it's, it's so you can see it's just slipping on slipping on its base. So that angle is probably too extreme and we're gonna probably straighten that up just a little bit. I've had to tweak this one a little bit, kind of moved it this way. Anyway, it's just like some plan. I did have to put a hole right here just so I can 
temporarily zip tie this. So again, before I even make a mounting bracket, um, ideally I want to get this plane, you know, parallel to this so I can create a, a base right off of this and we can screw it in. So really it needs to be like this. Um, that where, that's where it needs to go. It keeps slipping a little bit, but hey, once it's here and hopefully it's not gonna hit. Now I may need to just put a slight notch into here. This will move the motor in just a little bit. The motor itself is against, you know, uh, against the inside there, but it's got some room and a gap in here to go. So if I clearance this section right here, I can move it in. So what I was doing is just kind of marking it where I think it fits best. Uh, I'll put a mark here, a little mark on the motor to kind of line it up. Put our ground cable right on the motor. Turn it on. There we go. No signs of rubbing anywhere. Yeah, there we go. Let me show you. So I straighten this arm up just a little bit. But we have a nice angle here. Notice how it's not rotating. And my arms aren't touching anymore nice and quiet. I still need to bring the motor in, so we're gonna do that next to make sure this stays away from the fender. But otherwise, I think once that arm is permanently affixed to the factory arm, we're gonna be golden. And check that out, huh? pro tip here so I went ahead and drill the holes for this this is screwed in tight just to orientate the, the motor in the position we need and then I've got this one right here is also screwed in but I didn't weld it in yet just because it's a lot easier to do it this way go ahead and put the hole in the metal and then place it up in here then mark if you need to cut and then tack weld it while these two are screwed down that way you're not chasing the exact exact pattern um, you know, between these two, which is gonna be really hard to do without, you know, some sort of a template or something. So anyways, this is how I did it. I went ahead and just notched it right here so I can get back to the, uh, it's the bolt a little bit. I need to widen it out just a little bit. It's not perfect, but the notch, and then I'll straighten this up. What we're gonna do is go over here and tack it. Then I'll go ahead and weld it from the backside and from the sides right through here. And then what we'll have to do is drill a hole down here for the third one. The ones the three are in, we could put two holes here and then actually screw this to the lip, the frame, and this thing is not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna sandwich itself in the lip right here. So it ought to be pretty strong. I have gone through the articulation a few times, just to make sure that it still works. This rod is next, it's the big problem. So we'll get to the rod after the bracket's made. But so far it's looking pretty good. You can tell it's already pretty damn solid just sitting here like this, but this is on. We're gonna go ahead and tack it, bring it over to the bench and fully weld it in. And I went ahead and bolted the bracket up to the motor. Uh, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fit it up here like this. And then what we can do is weld it in. Now I was gonna bolt it in, but here's the deal. I can't get a nut behind that bolt anyway. So we're gonna plug weld there and there. And that's gonna hold it up against here. I may even do a bead weld along the back of it 
Um, but that's definitely gonna be strong enough. It's not gonna go anywhere at all. And let me show you, I went ahead and did just clearance this a little bit, this hump right here. This is all gonna get painted anyways, but I clearanced it out just because it lets the motor not rest up against the body of the car. So it'll be hanging out just like that. Hopefully we'll keep some of the vibration down and the sounds. I do know that making this or welding this on like this metal to metal is absolutely going to make the entire um, wiper assembly a lot louder in the car. Like I get that, it is what it is. But anyways, we're gonna go ahead and plug this weld or plug weld this in just like that. And that gives me a little bit of room back here. Actually, there we go. A little bit of room, keeps that from hitting the motor. Then, yeah, then we'll worry about the arm and the pivot here. All right, guys, listen, I'm done for the day. We'll catch back up later this week or tomorrow. I'm gonna go and wash up so I get ready for dinner because I've been out in the garage now for probably six or seven hours doing this, so. It is what it is. All right, so it's the next day. I'm feeling refreshed and ready to get back on this project. So the bracket has been made and is holding the wiper motor nice in place as we expected. I still need to drill out and I will drill out this section back here and get a longer bolt and a spacer in the bottom of it to finish that third. But right now, just to hold it in place, this is working just fine. So the motor stays on nice and tight and secure to the frame or to the body of the car. So now that what I want to do before I make the extension rod to connect into here, into the factory arm, what we wanna do is adjust the park position. Now this is probably the single most important thing about this whole swap. None of this is going to work because right now, if I hook everything up as is, and I install my wiper motors in the down position, this is not in a down position, okay? This is stopping to where the lever is actually in probably a mid position, sort of in the mid, mid part of the windshield. It's really easy if you really think about it. This thing moves clockwise. As it rotates, all it's doing is pushing this arm back and forth. That creates your wiping motion. As this arm moves back and forth, it's changing this spindle and it's moving like this, okay? It goes back and forth. So as this rotates into a position, it simply crosses a plane to a point where it's gonna push the arm forward or push the arm backwards. Except for this point right here is where the arm stops whenever you flip the switch into the off position. This is called park mode. This is what parks your windshield wipers down the base, hidden away so you can't see it in the middle of your windshield and obstructs your view. So what we want to do is alter this arm. So let's think about the movement of this. As this rotates, so let's say this is goes to the 12 o'clock. From this position here, we're in the, eight o'clock or you know eight or nine o'clock position here we're going to go from nine o'clock to twelve o'clock it's going to move the arm forward okay moving the arm forward raises the windshield up until its peak position is going to be at twelve o'clock that means as this rotates to twelve o'clock its highest position will be up on the top of the windshield okay that's where we want it to be now as it starts making its way down to three o'clock it's now pulling the arm back down as it pulls the arm back down Notice what happens whenever I pull this down, your spindle starts spinning the other way. That's what brings the wiper back down on the windshield until it gets to the point where it's all the way down here at six o'clock. At six o'clock, it is now at its furthest down position that this can rotate. This will be pulled all the way down this way, causing the spindle to be as far down as possible until it crosses that six o'clock plane, starts making it way back up, and then that will slowly start pushing this arm back up as well, and therefore making the windshield wipers rise up on the windshield to wipe your windshield. So we need this arm to be in the furthest pull position away as we can to ensure that the wiper arm is solid and down. So a park mode is gonna be here, okay? Notice that it can't go any farther down, right there. That's where we want it to start at. If I were to turn the windshield wiper on with a wiper motor, into the position, the rotation that's in now would actually sweep halfway up the windshield and then go down across your fender and scrape it and scratch it. Okay, you don't want that. So park mode essentially needs to be right here. So that will pull the arm further away. So if just looking down here, down the line, it's easy to visualize that this mark right here, if the lever was pointed right here, uh, we would be in a good position. So, so that's what we need to do. We need to move this lever here. So we're gonna to try to do that now, see what happens. Now I know it's keyed, so I don't think you can just undo this bolt and move it. 
it's going to be a little bit more to it than that where you're going to have to cut it and put it where you want, weld it, make a new plate or new bracket, or we're going to have to open up the motor and find the relay in here. There's actually a relay that controls a contact point on when to open and close, and when it closes, it actually creates a reverse polarity or grounds the motor, I guess, um, and uses it as a brake. So as it's spinning, it doesn't continue. The inertia doesn't you know, continue to slow down and then stop. It actually uses a brake. So that thing is set somewhere to click on when the arm position is right here. As soon as it clicks on, this thing comes to a halting stop. So within the motor itself, there's hopefully a mechanism that we can adjust um, to stop the motor here versus here. And if not, and if there's nothing I can figure out, um, we'll cut the arm and we'll just, you know, weld it to where we need it to be as well. So either way it will work. I'd rather try to do it the right way before we weld a new arm on. All right, so that's pretty tight. Yeah, see? Let me show you. See, so if you move the arm, you got an option to move it 180 degrees out. We need to move it here. That's not going to help us. It just needs to move about 45 degrees. So, all right, all right. We've got this thing on my toolbox over here. We're going to get the motor off. Hopefully, we can find the relay inside of here and alter it. Might be a good idea to mark it here. Take a few taps with a rubber mallet here. Okay. okay, so this is the parking mechanism here. This is the relay I was telling you about right there. So whenever this gets energized, it tells the motor to stop. So as soon as I'm making start making rotation, see, notice how it's closed. This is the park position. As I keep moving it though, see, it's open. And this will continue to stay open, closing the circuit, allowing power to go through the motor. Turns it until it gets to that position. Again, it just closes, and it tells it to stop. There's a pin right inside the case, which is right there. I don't know if you can see that. So as this, there must be a cam behind here, because as this gear spins around, it engages a cam that spins that pin or pushes that pin up which then pushes the pin up right here, which disengages that contact sensor. You can see it happen right there. See, it's off, and as I move it, boop, there it goes. So that's the switch mechanism we need to alter. There it goes. Okay, we want to see this cam gear. Okay, so here, there it explains it. Here is your cam gear. You can see that notch right there. As it spins around, that notch bumps up. When it bumps up, it hits this lever right there, which lifts the plunger right here. So that you can see that's the plunger I was talking about. And if I lift it up, it opens the contact point. So that's it. Now, that being said, this is permanent. It's hard fixed. It's not adjustable. Um, at least it doesn't look like it is. Um, I ended up wallowing out the hole a little bit, getting to where I wanted, and then tacking in place. So it's definitely not going to go anywhere. Um, however, it's working as we want. I want you to pay attention here to my line. This is the line, the center line, and also when this opens up. So as I come across here, boop. It's time to see if our efforts paid off. When I give power to the car, since it's not in its park position, it should make a full turn and stop right at my mark, which is right here. It's gonna bring the lever completely back away, pulling that arm all the way back. So here goes nothing. Okay, let's see where we're at. 
Looks pretty good. There's my mark. There's the lever. Okay, looks pretty good. Looks right on. Actually, it is exactly where I welded it. Exactly where the stop should be. Um, of course, it's not going to go anywhere. It's welded and bolted on now. Um, so now we just need to get the arm extended so that it goes to this guy right here. And we can test the wipers out, make sure that they're in the right position. So it is parked with a lever completely here at 6 o'clock, 6 o'clock relative to the cow here. It looks like it's a little bit this way, but I don't think from here to there is going to make that much of a difference in the movement on the arm. We're talking about probably this much, you know, pivot movement. So I don't know. We'll see if we have to adjust it. Uh, we'll do what we have to do. So there it is. Let's get the arm extended. Try this thing out. Okay. After many attempts bending this way and that, it's not hitting this at all. I've got what I think is the perfect angle on that bar. So you a nice curve. It's not bumping on anything. And we got some squeaks going on, but that's okay. We will fix that as well. So let me show you what the bar, end result bar looks like here. That is the shape I came up with. <laughs> See that? These more or less end up in the same plane at the end, but that curve, this notch right here ensures that when it's moving, this section is moved away from the hinge. And then I needed to drop it down and then back up a little bit just to clear the hole. This for me is perfect. I'm going to go ahead and weld it in, cut this piece off, we'll test it all out, get everything nice and painted. I need to finish welding this. You won't see me until this is all done, but I want to get everything kind of nice looking. And then we, that buzz is annoying, we will reconvene. Okay, remember how I said I was gonna go ahead and add a bracket down here? I went ahead and did that. I had some um, aluminum left around that I just drilled and tapped and with a self-tapping screw into the firewall here or to the side here and then into the casing on the motor. If you were watching it earlier, you're noticing it was kind of flexing. Now, it does not. Okay, got the piece drying here. Rounded it off so it is extended and at least painted a little bit so yep there's an SEM black on it now I'm gonna remove the pump we'll probably clean up the pump a little bit almost tripped on my butt all right the pump now I'm gonna remove the wiper motor we'll probably clean it up a little bit remove or at least paint the bracket put some chassis coat on the bracket yeah all right man so that is it it's painted, the bracket's painted, uh, the motor's been cleaned up a little bit. You can see it's a lot quieter. I ended up, I need to find a better bushing in here. So guys, right now, you know, obviously there's some clunking going on. What we're seeing here is just the sound of this moving a little bit on the bracket. So you can kind of feel it clunk whenever it transitions from forward to backwards. Um, you can see the, the angle here, right there on a the stock point. It is going from here to out to in to out. But nonetheless, it's working. I put some chassis black coat on it. I did put a bushing in here of some sort. I need to find a copper bushing or nylon or some sort of better bushing. And then I greased it up a little bit so the squeaking is gone. So the squeaking's gone. It's just got a little bit of noise, but we have no flex at all. The motor is super solid. And it is going to work perfect. I need to stop ruining my wipers on this dry windshield. But High speed. So that is it. That's it. They're a little shaky, but they're working. I don't plan on driving this thing in the rain all the time, but it's a street car and it absolutely will be driven and we will absolutely most likely be caught in the rain in it, especially if my wife is driving. So I wanna make sure the wipers are functional, but I wanna clean up this area here. So next time you see the car, this will be fully patched up as well as the throttle cable here. This is also going to be patched up because we won't need that with the drive by wire. One thing I did not mention is yes, you do have to relocate the wiring on here. I'm doing that anyways. We're going to be doing a complete wire tuck. I went ahead and moved the wiper motor through the hole that I'm going to use for the wire tuck here. The rest of it will get moved as well later but that is one thing i did not mention for the very get go is you do have to do something about the wire and move it and relocate it so that you can get to it in the fender well here all right put the fender on real quick to show you that it is not rubbing the fender you've got some room 
not a ton of room, but you've definitely got some room and it fits fine without rubbing. So the fender wheel will be in there. That'll keep hopefully the water nasty elements out of that area. But there you have it, man. Push it up all the way. See? No hit. So that's good. Hey, listen, man, if you like this content, make sure to subscribe. Make sure to follow me on Instagram because all this junk was put on Instagram before I put it out to you on this YouTube video. It does help me out because it keeps me motivated to make, make these videos. Uh, and, you know, it's not easy making these videos all the time. So I want to just thank everyone for all the support. Thank you, buddy, for all the help. Thank you, Doug, for this idea. I would not have done this, wouldn't even thought about it if it wasn't for Doug Yergen at Foxworks. So thank you for that. Guys, we will see you next time on House of Doula. Take care.